I'm Ren. Let's see what's making news. Victorians have been through a pretty wild 24 hours, with bushfires and intense storms leaving more than half a million homes without any power. Here's Michelle with an update. It was a day Victorians were dreading. Ripley has been the perfect recipe for, for a bad fire day. Yesterday, they faced the worst day for bushfire risk since the black summer fires four years ago. With dry lightning, high temperatures and strong winds, causing out of control fires in the state's west, destroying homes and forcing lots of locals to evacuate. To take the kids and dog and leave and hubby will most likely stay to yeah. protect the property. And then came the storms. It was quite wild, I thought. Well, this is getting worse and worse. Uh, poked my head out and um, yeah, saw a bunch of power lines and trees came down. It all happened within the space of about three to five minutes. The wild weather uprooted trees, damaged homes and one person died. It also caused massive damage to the state's power transmission towers, leaving more than half a million Victorian homes and businesses in darkness. The damage to the transmission system is bigger than we've ever seen before. It means that we are going to be in quite a stressful situation. Today, the fires have been contained in Victoria's West, with emergency warnings downgraded to watch and act. Authorities say about 50% of people who lost power have now been reconnected, and everywhere else should be back on soon. The world's biggest single-day election was held today in Indonesia. Almost 205 million Indonesians headed to the polls to vote for the country's new president and vice president. It's a three-way race between Anies Baswedan, Prabowo Subianto and Ganja Pranowo, who are all vying for the top spot from current president Joko Widodo. If you've caught a whiff of the pungent smell of love today, that's because it's Valentine's Day. Joe looked at where it all came from and why it's such a big deal. Oh, hi. I'm stupid. Kind of like Cupid, but, you know, cheaper to hire for TV appearances, and my actual name is Stuart. You know, Stuart, Cupid, stupid. Valentine's Day is the busiest in the calendar for me, so let's wrap this up quick. <laughs> Valentine's Day dates back to around 400 AD. And while historians aren't entirely sure where it all began, many reckon it came from Saint Valentine. He was a Roman priest from the third century. The emperor at the time banned marriage. But Valentine, the little romantic, arranged marriages in secret. He was eventually caught, thrown into jail, and sentenced to death for disobeying the emperor's orders. Saint Valentine died on February the 14th, but his romantic shenanigans are why today is associated with love. Cupid and I, we, we don't actually know the guy, but you'll see us around a lot on Valentine's Day because we are the Roman gods of love. <laughs> you are now in love. These days, Valentine's Day is huge business, with lovers spending more than $25 billion worldwide on things like cards, flowers, chocolate, jewellery, date nights, etc, etc. <coughs> um, anyway, speaking of which, I've got to get to my next job, so, uh, ciao! <laughs> now these next stories are guaranteed to make your heart sing. <laughs> That's just beautiful. Introducing, drum roll please, Suni and Seven Princesses. This senior rap group in South Korea is best known for their songs about rural farm life. They say rapping has helped them stave off dementia and feel more connected to younger generations. And finally, we flip to a wacky tradition in the small English town of Olmi. Every year on Pancake Day, contestants run races with pancakes in hand and must flip the cake at the beginning and end of the 380 metre race. It's a horrible distance, it's like a horrible, you just have to go flat out and then hope that you're not going to fall over. <sighs> okay, that's enough now. Hmm? Oh, anyway, that's all we've got time for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye! <laughs>